Hey guys, welcome to The Plant Room. I'm gonna be repotting this philodendron patriciae with you today, and we'll talk a little bit about it and a little about its care so far. I mean, this is a baby. It, it's pretty much a baby plant, but I, I've enjoyed growing this so far, so I can at least share like the type of lighting I have it in and so far what it's been enjoying. Um, it just put out this brand new leaf here and it's been slowly filling out. It is beautiful. I love this plant and it's been surprisingly easy to care for. Um, one thing about it is it does come from the Chaco region or Chaco department of Colombia, and it's actually one of the wettest areas on the planet but this plant can actually deal with relatively lower humidity levels, which is really nice for us trying to grow them in our homes. Um, but anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get started repotting this right now. Uh, so far it's been doing well and it seems to be okay, except it wants more moisture. Funny enough, I do have it in the, this uh, self-watering pot, but it's not able to suck up enough of the water. So I've actually been top watering it and it's been in the self-watering pot. Um, that capillary action it is just not able to make it high enough towards the surface. And this plant actually has a lot of roots right near the surface. Also, what's interesting about these plants is although it looks more like just a pendant plant, they are climbers. And so they want some kind of support to help them along. So I've got this little shorty cocoa husk totem that I just made that uh, last night and with this plant in mind. Um, but then I also saw this piece of madrone wood. Uh, it was actually in our firewood pile and I just snatched it out of there um, before Michael burned it. And I I thought, oh, that, that might make an interesting totem too. So I'm gonna use a terracotta pot, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I gotta get the, the plant out and check out the roots, see what size root system I'm working with here. I did top it with moss to try to protect those roots that were kind of exposed, that were grown out around the top. Ooh, yeah, it's got lots of roots up there. Okay, and I always reuse my moss too, so. Um, I just, I'm just gonna drop it into this little container and re-wet that because oof, that was bone dry. So I'm really curious what the roots are doing in this mix. And I can reuse this mix too, but I'm, I just wanna see, I wanna make sure it's not too chunky because if you look in here, I did use a pretty chunky mix. Like it's very heavy on the, the bark and the pumice. Um, I do have like tree fern fiber in there too. Um, and cocoa husk. So I'm really curious to see how the root system is here, um, being that it's in such a chunky mix. But when I first got this plant, I'll tell you guys, I imported this from Equigenera's Ecuador location. So it had a tiny, tiny root system when it came in, like barely anything. There was like two little sprigs of roots coming off of it. And I basically had to completely reroot it from, from nothing, just from a stem almost. So I'm very curious to see what it's been doing since it's been in this mix. Okay, I'm trying to protect the leaves while getting this out. Oh. 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 There we go. All right, let's see what we've got here. Oh yeah, it does have a lot of new growth, which is nice. Those roots love clinging on to all that chunky pumice. And I'm gonna be changing up the mix. I wanna put it in more of a cocoa base and less bark. Yeah, everything's looking good. Okay, there we go. I got a better view of the root system on this side. I'll try to give you guys a, a better shot here. So there's the stem you can see in there. So it actually looks like it's been rooting really well from this higher node up here. And then also it looks like it put out brand new roots all down at the base here at this lower node. So that's really good. I'm, I'm glad to see that, that it's putting out, um, that it's using both nodes to root from. So that is excellent. And both the roots like these all look really good. There's lots of white tips and fresh new root growth. And also up here too. So everything's looking pretty good on the patriciae. So I'm glad for that. It's really interesting to see how the, the roots form and everything and like what type of roots we have here. So we've got like thicker, kind of uh, chunkier aerial roots up towards the top here. And then down below here, we've got sort of medium sized roots, I would say. They're not like super baby fine. Some, some of the newer ones are baby fine, but yeah, it looks like overall we've got a pretty, pretty good root system going on there. That's definitely way more growth than it had two months ago when I first got this plant in. So now let's go ahead and get it into its new setup. 
all right, this is the soil mix I'm gonna be using. This is my climbing philodendron mix that specifically I mixed up for epiphytes. So the base of this is made with cocoa husk products. So I've got two types of cocoa husk. I've got the cocoa chips and fiber, which are like the spongy bits um, that adds a lot of aeration to the soil. And it also holds on to moisture at the same time, but they're wicking too. So they're like little sponges that kind of suck up the moisture and hold it for the plant roots. And so it allows your soil to hold on to moisture but stay airy at the same time. And then I've got cocoa peat, which is like the fine. So that's really good for retaining moisture. And then for aeration, I've got pumice and perlite both mixed up in here. So they're kind of like uh, a variety of sizes in there. So the perlite's a little bit smaller, the pumice is a little bit coarser. And then also horticultural charcoal. I've noticed the roots of plants love clinging onto the horticultural charcoal. Like they love grabbing onto that, just like they love grabbing onto the cocoa chips. And I think that's it that I have in here right now. I don't think I added any worm castings, but um, usually I do that for a lot of my mixes, but I, I kind of just haven't been lately. I've been using other, other fertilizers. And one of the things I've been doing is adding sphagnum moss to the bottom of my pots and that just holds in the soil so it doesn't escape through the drainage hole. I might try this Madrone branch. Um, let me see if there's a front to this pot. Yeah, I think that would fit in this pot okay. Okay, let me add a little bit more soil in here and kind of stand that upright. As I was repotting this, my microphone shut off and I didn't realize it. So I was talking to you guys and you couldn't hear me. So I'm just gonna do a little voiceover for this part for you guys. So I'm repotting this into my terracotta. I think the roots are gonna fit in this pot perfectly. And I'm using the madrone wood for the support on this instead of a regular cocoa totem that I usually use. I just want something a little bit different. And I really like the texture of this and the coloration with the greenery from the plants. I know that piece of madrone wood is not like perfectly straight. I mean, the piece itself kind of has a little bit of a lean to it, but I sort of like that more natural earthy look, you know? And I'm going to grab a little bit of moss here because um, just because it has those aerial roots that are, well, they're in the soil now, they're just barely underneath the soil, but I want to add a little bit of moss on top. Premium New Zealand Sphagnum Moss by Best Grow. I've been ordering this on Amazon. I really like this a lot. But even though it comes in a small pack, like when you first get this, when I first got it, I was like, oh, did they send me the right size? <laughs> Cause that was kind of a lot for that little, that little block. But actually it's so pressed, like compressed together that there's a lot more in here than what it seems like anyway. That's my favorite moss so far. Yeah, it just does such a good job. It's so light and fluffy. I just, I throw this stuff on everything now. And it was a nice surprise that it started putting out this leaf after about a month of having it, I would say. Like probably once it started to push out some root growth and felt a little more comfortable in its pot is when it started to push out a new leaf. I am gonna add just a little teaspoon of my fertilizer on the top and I'll show you guys what I'm using. Okay, so I've got my NutriCoat here. This is a time release fertilizer and I just have one tiny little scoop. It's like, I don't know, maybe half a teaspoon there. And I'm actually just gonna kind of get it under that moss there and just sprinkle just a few little pearls of NutriCoat in there. All right guys, so I've got the philodendron patriciae up here. It's actually the following week right now. So it's been about a week since we potted this up and it's time for a watering because I just felt the moss and I can feel when that, that sphagnum moss on top is dry and crispy, it's usually time to water. But just in case, you can always stick your finger down underneath that moss and just kind of feel the soil. Normally I try, I try to feel in there like maybe an inch and yeah, it's, it feels a little dry. So we're gonna go ahead and give this another watering. Also this plant, like I mentioned before, it, it's so good with letting you know when it's thirsty because the leaves will just feel more pliable. So while you can use that as a sign to give it water, you wanna get in the habit of giving it water before it reaches that point. So that's one thing about these plants because they are rainforest plants and not just any rainforest plants, these things love water. They do not want to get to a point where they are reaching critical dryness. But also, I don't wanna give you guys the wrong idea. Although they do love water, they don't wanna drown in it. They don't wanna be in a waterlogged, uh, heavy, uh, dense soil that holds on to a ton of moisture. They really like a nice airy mix. They like well-draining soil, but they just like frequent watering. And I'm not gonna be taking it to the sink some of my plants, I just water right in place and I try not to 
Oops, <laughs> that just dripped right down the leaf. I've been trying to water more plants in place and just water them a little more frequently, but with less volume of water. Um, so normally I'll water until I just start to see it kind of come through the drainage hole just a little bit, especially because I don't want this to overflow here. And I have Super Thrive in my watering can also and I'm using rainwater. So the water has just started coming through the drainage hole, so I stop. And then occasionally, you know, maybe once a month or something, I will take them and actually flush them through at the sink um, for those occasions. But like the anthurium, I almost never flush those all the way through. Oh, we're not talking about anthurium right now, are we? Okay, that's a different video. <laughs> but let's stay on the topic of philodendron patriciae. So the philodendron patriciae has to be one of the most interesting plants that I have in my collection. And one of the reasons for that is, well, if you think about the anthurium waraquianum, it's the queen anthurium. So if that's the queen anthurium, the philodendron patriciae is the queen philodendron. It is absolutely stunning with its gorgeous long pendant leaves. The leaves are pleated, they're beautiful. So it comes from the Chaco region of Colombia. I think we talked about that earlier. And one of the things about that particular region is that it rains a lot. It's one of the wettest places on the planet. And there's actually some areas of that rainforest that get over 480 inches of rain per year. That's 40 feet of rain per year. And in meters, that's about 12 meters of rain annually, which is pretty intense. That's pretty wet. So pretty much, if you think of all the plants that are from that area that are endemic to that part of Colombia, they all like a lot of moisture. That's like their, their happy place, right? They love water and they like it frequently. They don't wanna go dry very long because that region, there are no long periods of dryness there. It's pretty consistent when it comes to the amount of water that they receive. So when we look at the climate of that area and how active it is with the rainfall, and then how many species are endemic to that area, it's like 38 species of anthurium and 36 species of philodendron. So that region of the planet actually has a very high level of biodiversity, which is really interesting because it kind of matches the amount of active rainfall going on there, right? So these plants, they don't wanna go dry in between their watering. You can let them dry slightly between watering, but they love consistent moisture. Something else that makes philodendron patriciae really special, aside from its you know beautiful pleated pendant leaves, is that they're hemiepiphytes. So what they do is they start their life most of the time up in the trees. So up in the branches, you know, birds, they spread the seeds, the seeds end up germinating. So it starts its life up in the canopy or on its host tree, and then it will send its roots, its aerial roots down. And once those reach the soil, it takes it from being just an epiphyte to a hemi-epiphyte. And it can start pulling up more moisture and more nutrients from the soil and anything that it's touching on the way down. So growing down the bark and the leaves can actually grow up to 48 inches long, which is crazy huge. And also the width of the leaf can be like 11 inches. The largest specimens ever recorded and documented were found in the rainiest part of the region and they get quite large when they're grown in their native habitat. But in our homes, they're going to be a bit smaller. They're not going to grow to their full potential. So in our homes, in uh, captivity or cultivation, they're only going to maybe get leaves maybe 30 inches or less, you know, about two and a half feet. And of course that's give or take, depending on the conditions you're able to provide it. And Dr. Thomas Crote is the botanist who named this plant. He actually was gonna originally call it Splendidum. However, that name was being taken for a different plant. So instead, he decided to name it after his wife, Patricia. And Dr. Crote is a legendary aeroid botanist. He's been researching these plants in the field in their native habitats for over 50 years. Even today, after spending 50 years working with these plants, he's still discovering new species of aeroids all the time in the field. And also what's really fascinating about these aeroids is some of them can be extremely endemic. So one area, one small part of a region will have a certain variety of species and then you move to the next region and it's totally different. So there's an extremely wide variety of aeroids that are still yet to be discovered out there. One of the reasons that there's so many aeroid species that have yet to be discovered is due to a lack of accessibility. There's still so much of the Troco region of Colombia that does not have roadways. 
and along the coast there is a lot of rainforest it's gorgeous but a lot of the area along that coastline can only be accessed by boat so there's no roads going to a lot of these areas. And also just a side note, I know there's some different pronunciation variations when it comes to our botanical plant names, but I did hear Dr. Thomas Crote pronounce this as Patriciae, just like Araceae. However, some of us say Araceae or Patriciae. I've also heard it pronounced Patriciae. So I guess it just depends on where we are in the world and kind of how we've gotten used to pronouncing our Latin botanical names. But I just wanted to slip that in there for you guys also. Dr. Thomas Crote and his wife have been happily married now for over 50 years. And each new leaf that these young Patriciae plants put out, they get more and more pleated. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, uh, elevation. That's something that's really helpful because we always like to look at the native habitat that helps our, us grow our plants better, um, knowing a little bit about them in their native habitat. So um, their elevation, they're grown at basically I believe it's about 300 feet to 1500 feet elevation. So they like it warm. They're not super high up in elevation, but they do have a level of tolerance. So they can actually be grown in short periods of cooler weather, like in the forties up to in the high nineties. They don't want to be cold for long, but they can handle like a short spurt of that. Um, at least uh, that's what I found from other people's experience. I don't want my little baby one getting that cold or even close to that cold, but maybe if you have one that's more established, it can probably handle you know, some more fluctuation in its temperature. Um, but yeah, I, I imagine that they probably prefer to be more like between 65 degrees and 85. That's probably like their sweet spot there. And I think we already talked about humidity earlier too, but they are tolerant of lower humidity levels. So they don't, they don't require like super high humidity to live, even though they're from a very humid environment they are very tolerant of our household humidity um, i mean let's see how low could they go that would be something to figure out i guess because i don't know the answer to that they probably do not want to live in the sonoran desert like if i put it outside it's probably going <laughs> to shrivel up i would i would never do that to you don't worry um, <laughs> but i imagine that they're probably okay in like you know i mean this room is 50 percent, and this is like my high, my version of high humidity is in this room. Um, and I only keep it between like maybe like 50, 60%, like right in between there. But yeah, uh, it, it seems to be perfectly fine in here. And I imagine that if it got down to 40%, it's not gonna freak it out because it seems like it's pretty tough. It does have some nice leathery leaves to kind of lock in that moisture. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the, the Philodendron Patriciae. As far as things that I can remember, if you guys do have any questions about it, feel free to leave them in the comments below or reach out to me on Instagram. I'm always happy to help if I can, um, or if I don't know the answer, I'll let you know that too. This is the sheath here that the leaf finally separated from, and I'm sure down inside there it is working on some new growth. We talked about the light levels earlier too, but anywhere from 600 to 1,000 foot candles is ideal. It's pretty optimal for this plant, but if the light intensity is too bright for it for too many hours of the day, we're talking like 1,800 foot candles, that can bleach out some of the leaves or the leaf margins. Also, I wanna stand back here and show you guys the distance it is from the grow light. So there's a grow light on my ceiling and there is the Patriciae on the top shelf there. It's also not too far from my southeast facing window here. Um, so it does get some residual natural light coming in too. So knowing that the Patriciae is from one of the wettest parts of the world, how often should we be watering it in our house? Well, it depends on how fast your soil is drying out. So a few factors are how much light the plant's receiving. The more light it receives, the more water it's gonna require. Uh, what type of pot we're using. If we're using a non-porous pot like plastic or ceramic that doesn't breathe, we're gonna to need to water less because it's not gonna be evaporating as quickly as if we're using terracotta, which is very porous. And the type of soil we're using, maybe you're using soil that holds on to more moisture for longer periods of time. I like to use really light, airy mixes, so I tend to need to water a little more frequently. And also the size of the pot that we're using, so how much soil volume is actually held in the pot, it will determine how fast that soil dries out also. So actually with this new setup, I'm thinking it's probably gonna be about every three to four days is probably about how frequent I'm gonna be watering. And you guys saw the root system and how quickly that grew, so it was about a month and a half, I would say, that that grew out that 
that entire root system because it had nothing <laughs> just about when it came in. So uh, they do tend to be moderately fast growers, which is uh, really lovely. Yeah, I'm amazed at how fast it put out those roots and a new leaf <laughs> within like six weeks time. Crazy. One more thing, if it does not receive enough water, you will see some dried tips on it, just like most other plants. So that kind of lets you know if you need to bump up the watering also. And I think I mentioned already, but it's about three feet away from my grow light. My grow light's right up at the ceiling right here. Um, I've got a spider from a grow light up there. And if this starts to get taller, I will probably reposition this somewhere else just to make sure it doesn't get too close to that grow light. But yeah, I just noticed I don't hear a whole lot of people talking about this plant, but it is a really cool one. It's one of my favorites in my collection. So I wanted to share a little bit of info with you guys. And thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.